I mean, Charlie Sykes, Israel is getting ready to stare down enemies on every border yeah. as it buries murdered, slaughtered, mutilated babies. And there are Republicans afraid of a mean tweet from Jim Jordan. It's sick. <sighs> No, I mean, it, what, it, it is a hell of a uh, split screen when you have this, you know, deeply serious uh, world crisis and the deeply unserious politics of Washington, D.C. Well, Donald Trump appears uh, likely to get his uh, to get his uh, to, to get his speaker here, as you see the uh, the normies and the so-called moderates caving in to this kind of pressure campaign. And maybe they have simply calculated that as crazy and as absurd as electing Jim Jordan, a Speaker of the House, is putting him third in line to the presidency, uh, at least it's not as crazy as what they're about to do by renominating Donald Trump. And apparently they're more afraid of cutting a bipartisan deal to have some power sharing with the Democrats than they are in putting a January 6th co-conspirator uh, in the Speaker's chair. So the, the January 6th role is something we should revisit. This is... Um injured um, Capitol Police officer Michael Fanone's statement, Claire, quote, Jim Jordan is an insurrectionist who has no place being yeah. second in line to the presidency. I witnessed the deadly assault on our democracy with my own eyes, which is why it absolutely disgusts me that extreme Republicans could choose an insurrectionist and election denier as their leader, someone who knew about January 6 ahead of time, yet did nothing to stop it. This is a very dark time for our democracy and should serve as a wake-up call to all Americans that we can never take our democracy for granted. Um, you know, Kevin McCarthy is a special sort of coward in that he really saw Trump's role in January 6 the way the three of us did. Jim Jordan is different. He helped Trump plan it. Liz Cheney tweeted yesterday he pressured Pence to overturn Joe Biden's um, victory without any evidence at all. Yeah, and I don't know why we keep holding out hope that there are going to be Republicans that have the courage to lead against this kind of d despicable behavior. Um, that they want to elevate this guy to be uh, the highest leader in the Republican Party right now is astounding. Th when there's just, it would just take people who won Biden districts, Republicans who won districts that Joe Biden won. How hard could it be to stand up to this guy? But I'll tell you, the other thing that's going to happen, if he gets these votes, and I am now closer to saying that he will than I certainly was 24 hours ago, you know what he's done? He's cut a deal with Rogers on defense, and he's cut a deal with defense appropriations. Those two members were absolutely anti-Jordan until he made them promises. Now, how are those promises going to play out with his crazy caucus? Because you know it's about helping Ukraine. You know it's about not shutting down the government. You know it's about not doing defense cuts. So once again, you find promises being made that will be hard to be kept within the, the, the chaos of the Republican caucus. So it's going to be, um, if, if he wins, it will be because he has made promises to some members who feel strongly about keeping the government open and feel strongly about supporting Ukraine. And I don't know how that's going to play in crazy town. I don't think it's going to play very well. I don't think we should let the moment go by without talking about Sean Hannity's role in all this. I remember during the, the Trump presidency, I talked about a media run state when a lot of very great journalists started reporting on how Trump got all of his briefings from watching Fox and Friends and then sent out tweets and fired out missives to his cabinets and even made some hiring decisions. I believe um, some of his communicators were recommendations from Fox anchors, including Sean Hannity. Um, Sean Hannity is playing a role in doing what Jim Jordan couldn't do all by his lonesome. And that is putting the squeeze on Republican holdouts. If you need Sean Hannity to win the job of speaker, what do you owe Sean Hannity once you have it, Charlie? Well, yes. Um, I mean, clearly, this is very much on brand, you know, the bullying, uh, the, the, th the threats, uh, the, the, the doxing of, of supporters. But keep in mind that, look, um, you, you made an interesting point earlier. You know, there are people who are fighting for their lives, and we've seen examples of real courage, real courage. And now we are dealing with a Congress of the United States where we have members afraid of Hannity. Think about that as a legacy. They are afraid that Sean Hannity might say something bad about them. And that tells you so much about the state of the modern Republican Party and of the Congress right now.
Claire, um, I know you tried to take us to substance, so I'll follow you um, to substance. Um, Jim Jordan doesn't really stand for much on that front, but one thing he took on was one of the biggest flops of the Republican-controlled House, and that's the so-called Weaponization Committee. Even by Republican MAGA standards, he hasn't been able to, you know, assemble the, the, the three cars of a three-car parade. The competence um, is is clearly not Jim Jordan's thing. What does that sort of put in motion as he seems perhaps ready to ascend to the speakership? Well, it will be very interesting to see how he handles his first big challenge. And that's going to be a bill that I think will come through the Senate fairly quickly that will probably not just assist Israel, but will also assist Ukraine and probably um, Taiwan and probably funding for the southern border. And that's going to come over to the House. And, you know, the crazy caucus will try to slice and dice it. And he won't get it through. He won't get it through unless all four pieces are there. I predict that. So I don't know how long he'll be speaker. You know, we may be back here again um, in another month uh, or two months and talking about him being removed. Uh, they have a huge schism in their party. And it is between people who have the same foundational values that Republican Party has always had and the Trump people. And uh, never the two are going to mix well. They may paper over it tomorrow, but uh, I can't imagine that this is going to bode well for our country over the next six months. If it's Monday, it's vacate the yeah. speaker day. You can just, you can, like, it writes itself, right? Um, it's.